Dear brothers and sisters, 22 years ago, I looked at my clock, which read 9.27 p.m. I stared at the clock and was fixated on it. It seemed to stay on the same time for an unusually long period of time without moving. The numbers became larger and had an amber glow about them. I asked the Lord what 9.27 meant, and he said it would be the fulfillment of prophecy at a later time. On Saturday morning, Americans awoke to alarming and disastrous reports of war in the Middle East as the Hamas terrorist group attacked Israel in brutal, unspeakable ways. Fire rained down from the skies, families grieving over the kidnapping and murder of loved ones. Christians around the globe prayed for peace, for souls to be saved, and God's supernatural protection for the innocent. Israel is now at war after Hamas shocked them with a surprise attack that has killed hundreds and injured thousands. After the attack on Israel, I saw in vision 927 over and over in my mind and heard the words, The Covenant with Many. I remember reading about that in the book of Daniel, so I opened to Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, which reads, He will confirm a covenant with many for one week, and in the middle of the week he will put an end to the sacrifice and offering, and at the temple he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. So what does this mean? Holy Spirit, please guide us. Daniel 9.27 indicates that the upcoming seven-year tribulation, the 70th week of Daniel, will start with the confirming of a covenant with many. The name covenant implies many sides will be part of the agreement, including Israel. Isaiah 28 also discusses the covenant known as the covenant with death. Verses 14 and 15 gives us a good idea of what the nature of this covenant is. Therefore, hear the word of the Lord, you scoffers who rule this people in Jerusalem. You boast, we have entered into a covenant with death. With the realm of the dead we have made an agreement. When an overwhelming scourge sweeps by, it cannot touch us, for we have made a lie our refuge and falsehood our hiding place. The passage tells us that Jerusalem leaders will feel so secure that they will become complacent. We can infer from this that the covenant is a peace deal. What does it take for a peace deal to arise that involves many signatures? and for the leaders of Jerusalem to feel secure? War. Israel and all nations involved will want to seek a long-term peace agreement, ushering in tribulation and the Antichrist's reign. Jesus began speaking. You will hear murmurings, that this declaration of war will lead to the fulfillment of Scripture found in Ezekiel. But I tell you, Elizabeth, and all my people, that it will be for a later time. I was thinking the end of the tribulation, Lord? He continued, This war will alter the landscape of the Middle East and will create a chain reaction for future events. Thus, putting into motion a forthcoming, immense, larger-scale war. Pray for these hostages who have been taken from their homes. Little children, young women, elderly women. Pray for the wounded and the souls of the dying. The specific targeting of these precious ones grieves my heart to the core. Go to them, dear ones. 
providing all with comfort and love. I am urgently calling my priests to exercise their divine duties, giving these souls absolution, communion, and last rites. This terrorist organization is well funded by the dark government of this world and will use all means at their disposal to try and destroy Israel. Your husband mentioned genocide earlier today, and that is precisely their wicked intent. You should not be surprised that these horrific events are unfolding and revolving around Jerusalem, as this city plays a critical role in the last days. Keep your focus on me, and I will guide you by my spirit as to how your prayer posture should be at any given time. Go to them, my dear ones. Go to them. And that was the end of his message. In Zechariah 12, 3 through 4, God says, On that day when all the nations of the earth are gathered against her, I will make Jerusalem an immovable rock for all the nations. All who try to move it will injure themselves. On that day I will strike every horse with panic and its rider with madness, declares the Lord. I will keep a watchful eye over Judah and I will blind all the horses of the nations. The prophetic clock is ticking, dear family, as the Bible speaks about the regathering of Israel and after that, she would come under fierce attack, which is happening now. Let us pray, heart dwellers, for the salvation of souls, for peace, for an end to this war and horrific terrorism, for God's hand of protection over the innocent, and for love to prevail in the hearts of all mankind.